welcome to New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. This is Ian Stark for New Blue. New Blue's new lighting effect bundle contains no less than 10 plugins, all designed to let you play around with artificial light sources to give your footage new sparkling, shimmering, flickering, strobing, and glowing qualities that would be very hard to capture in camera. Add to that the bonus lightning plugin, and you have a very comprehensive palette of lighting tools at your disposal. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at a selection of the light effects plugins, getting to grips with some of the controls, and giving you a good jumping off point for you to go ahead and explore on your own. We'll be adding more plugin specific tutorials to the tips and techniques library, which will go into more detail about how you can use light effects in your own projects. This tutorial is intended to be an introduction to the collection. So let's jump in and take a look at what we've got to play with. We'll start with the Flickr plugin, which is one of my favorites. Flickr lets you simulate a light source such as firelight, light reflecting off water, or in this case, a TV glow. Let's build this effect up from scratch, and we'll start by resetting the plugin's values to zero. To allow us to easily set up the light source, we'll check the setup box, which will show us much more clearly the area that we'll be affecting. Let's start by setting up the basics of our Flickr. Firstly, we'll set the radius of the area to be affected. If I change the tint color to light blue and increase the tint value to around 60, you'll get a much clearer idea of what's going on. I'll just shift the circle up a little so that the focus is on his face. The edge is a little harsh, so I'll use the feather control to soften it. And because he's watching a fairly small TV, I want to darken the area outside the boundary, so I'll take the darken value right up to 100 as well. It's still a little bright, so let's drop the brightness value and because this is simulating a low light scene, let's also desaturate the image. OK, I can always go back and tweak these settings, but for now I'm happy. Let's now apply the actual flicker. When I turn setup off, you'll see that the image changes drastically and appears to lose the TV glow qualities it had before. Well, that's because the effect is only visible when we animate it. At the moment, all the animation values are set to zero. If we increase these while playing the clip, you can see how the light we set up earlier now pulses in and out to give a great TV glow effect. Rate sets how quickly the light flickers. Minimum level sets a lower level so that the light flickers between that level and full intensity. And finally, strength sets how much of the animation effect you want, with lower levels reducing the intensity of the flicker to produce very subtle results. Let's take a look at another one of the plugins in the Light Effects collection. Neon Lights is a really neat tool to use, among other things, on title text. It's simple to get great results quickly, plus there's a lot of tweaking you can do to get exactly what you're looking for. Let's start by resetting the plugin values. There are a couple of values that I have to set before we can see any results, and those are Picture and Glow, which determine how much of the original picture and how much of the glow is mixed into the final output. Let's set both to 100 for now, and let's set the glow color to blue, and the mix color value to 100. As I increase the sensitivity value, we can see it's having an effect on the text. Now watch what happens when I drop the picture value to 50. OK, you're beginning to see why this plugin is called Neon Lights. Let's go back and tweak some of the other controls until we have just what we want. I can also add a little movement into the effect by changing the controls in the shimmer section. Size sets the size of the random noise that's generated to create the shimmer. Intensity sets the strength of the shimmer. And Rate sets the speed of the shimmer. The shimmer controls appear in most of the Light Effects plugins, so once you've learned them in one, you've learned them in all. There are plenty of Glow plugins around, even New Blue has one or two in other collections, but I don't think any are quite as tweakable as this one, Glow Pro. Rather than show you a simple glow though, I'm going to quickly create an interesting effect on some text. When you first load up the plugin, it's set to its default values. Let's use these as a starting point for the effect. I'm actually quite happy with most of these defaults, but I do want to change the glow color to blue. And it's as simple as that. But now, let's introduce another control that's common to a number of the Light Effects plugins, Liquify. Liquify lets you mangle the original image, and that's just what I want to do here to make it look like the text is slowly dissolving in the water. I'll add a keyframe at the end of the clip 
change the liquify value to minus 100, and there you go. We can add a little Glow Pro and the Mirage effect to the background image just to give it some subtle movement. And I think that looks pretty good. There are a number of plugins that we haven't covered in this introduction, such as Light Bender, RGB Shift, Spinning Lights, Mirage, Starlight, and Light Rays. And we'll cover these in some detail in other tips and techniques tutorials. But let's finish this tutorial by looking at the wonderfully named Psycho Strobe. If ever you wanted to put a public health warning at the front of one of your films, here's your excuse. Psychostrobe is really not for people with photosensitive epilepsy, or, indeed, a hangover. In this example, we'll take this simple clip and we'll make it look like it's being shown using a hand-cranked projector. I've already speeded up the clip to around 150% of normal. Now let's set up our basic strobe effect. I want the glow colour of the strobe to be a very dark brown and I want the strength of the glow fairly low. Now, to introduce the strobing effect, I'm going to increase the timing rate and the hold values. You'll want to experiment with these settings until you get just what you're looking for, but for now, I'm happy with these. Finally, I want to desaturate the original image, which I do by dropping the saturation level right down. I'll slip in a vignette courtesy of New Blue's Video Essentials 2 collection, and although it's not necessarily an accurate simulation, it makes a pretty good stab of things. The Light Effects Collection from New Blue is a comprehensive toolbox of light manipulation effects that you can use on your titles and images in an almost infinite number of ways. I hope this introduction has whetted your appetite and I really hope that you'll experiment and explore the many possibilities Light Effects has to offer. To find out more about New Blue FX or to watch more tips and techniques tutorials, click to www.newbluefx.com. This is Ian Stark saying thanks for watching and for learning a little bit about New Blue FX.